So my name's Anna Percival. I'm a trustee at the Bradians Trust. Um, I've been working um, on a project to record the history of the Brady Clubs since uh, 2019. And we are now at the Brady Centre in what's now the art room. Um, it used to be an open air football court on the roof of the building. And I think the part of the building that we're in now is the Miriam Moses extension, which was funded from the local community and built in 1960. The original part of the club was built in 1935 under the guidance of Miriam Moses, of course. So um, Miriam was born into a family that was already active in the community. Her dad um, was quite active supporting um, small local Jewish communities. And that led Miriam into work uh, with local people. She was very concerned with women and children's lives. She uh, stood up for what she believed to be right. She was um, a Liberal councillor a number of years before she became the first female mayor of Stepney. Um, she campaigned for health centres, um, for mothers and children. She worked with the local schools. She campaigned for the local hospitals to provide kosher food for um, Jewish patients who wouldn't have been able to eat otherwise. And she campaigned for women's rights, not just locally, but um, you know nationally. She was Justice of the Peace. And she sat on the board for a number of local schools. Um, and by 1925, it had become obvious that there was a need for a youth centre for girls um, in the local area. There were already provisions for boys. They called them working lads clubs. Um, and Miriam realised that girls also needed support to, to move beyond their, their educational circumstances. And she was invited to become chairwoman of the newly formed Brady Girls Club. Um, and she stayed with the club for 40 years. She was um, directly involved for 25 years. And then after she retired, she continued her association. Um, and Miriam was a very busy woman. Um, she never married. Um, she was devoted to the community, but we have a lot of photographs of Goals Holidays outside of London, and there's Miriam. So she spent her free time with her Goals as well as her working hours. And then by her side, she has um, Betty Benjamin, who was Elizabeth Tesla and married, 1958, became Miss Benjamin. And the Goals will remember her as a very sweet natured person, uh, they call her an angel. Um, she was the, the soft side. To, to Miriam's fourth righteous presence in the club. But at any one time, there would have been about 200 boys and girls here. Um, and across you know, the, the, the period that Miriam was involved, that equates to thousands of young women that, that passed through her doors um, and in her care. So the, this is your life. Find women from all over the world that have been involved um, with the Brady Club and whose lives were touched by Miriam. Um, and they found women in Australia and America um, who had been under Miriam's care while they were in the UK. She was a, a parent figure for a lot of these women, and she, want, she wanted more for them. So even the ones that then um, marry and leave, one of the ladies marries an American serviceman and goes back with him after the war, she recognises the difference that Miriam made to her life we also see Betty Benjamin, who at the time was, was uh, I think, was still Elizabeth Tesla. She married that year, actually. Um, and she's a very quiet person, so we don't have very much from her. And it's really interesting that she came on TV um, and spoke about Miriam um, because Betty was a very uh, a shy and supportive character um, in the Miriam story. So it's lovely that we've got a few words from her recorded in the script. She was by Miriam's side for a lot of years, um, probably the, the closest uh, Brady person to her. So she would have been involved in, uh, in, in contacting people and keeping it, um, keeping it a surprise for Miriam. Um, and it's a, I think it's a really special way to uh, commemorate someone's achievements. Um, Miriam, whilst you know, she worked very hard for the community, she, she wasn't someone who was about self-promotion for her it was about doing the best for her people her, you know her community so it's, it's really lovely that people like um uh, frank austin 
um, have put the time to, you know, the time and effort into this to, to commemorate what Miriam did. Um, Frank Austin was a local businessman who was very involved with the Brady story, um, would be here quite often, given awards, um, coming to exhibitions, um, fundraising for the club. Um, and as part of the This Is Your Life project, um, he put a substantial amount of money together Chip was handed over to Miriam um, on that event, which came, which paid for this extension that we're sitting in now. And Georgia Brown was a Brady girl um, who then went on to have um, an acting career. She she was the first person to play Nancy in Oliver on the West End stage. Um, Georgia Brown came back in later years and did a film about the East End called uh, One Pair of Eyes. She was here for a week filming, and I mean this is uh, this is after Miriam's involvement. But um, Georgia obviously credited Brady with giving her the, the confidence to go and succeed. And so it's quite touching that she comes back for This Is Your Life to, to honour Miriam's involvement in her life. The, uh, the Brady Centre was a very special and unique um, piece of, of youth, youth work history. Um, they did things in a way that hadn't been done before. They trialled the Duke of Edinburgh Award. He actually was a visitor here on a number of occasions. Um, and the successes that we see now from the Duke of Edinburgh Award um, really echo some of the activities that were organically happening at this club um, during the, the, the post-war years. People that we've spoken to who were young people at the time, um, they learned a sense of friendship and freedom and bonding that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And a lot of that is down to the forward thinking of people like Miriam who realised um, that young people needed to look beyond their circumstances to grow. We did a really interesting project recently where we brought back some of the former radio members and we did an arts project here with some of the current young people that use this place. The demographic has changed. The, you know, the former Bradians were a Jewish community who have now largely left the East End. And now the local residents are largely from Somali and Bangladeshi communities. And we formed a really special piece where we had um, a former Brady girl talking with a, a young woman who's here now. And both of them talk about how their families expected them to work in the family shop, until they got married and then you know, be a housewife, be married. And they wanted something more for themselves. And when they were here, they were able to explore that and to look beyond the, the, you know, the, those constraints. And part of that is about coming from an immigrant family that doesn't know what's available here. Um, part of it is about you know, family tradition. Um, and it's, a, it's about continuing a way of life. But then you've got you know, these young people that are, are yearning for something more. And Miriam's someone who recognised this. And Miriam was a, a singular female voice in a very male-dominated world. And she knew that the girls didn't need to be constrained by the circumstances of their birth. Um, and that's a, a really special moment in time. And in 1958, it's really interesting that that gets recognised. That actually feels like quite an early stage in the history of the feminist movement to recognise a woman who is so forward thinking and so supportive of the next generation.